Horney. I would like to introduce Hannah, Neve and Maddie, uh, the head girl team from the Ursuline High School in Wimbledon. The Ursuline is a voluntary AD comprehensive school for 1,300 Roman Catholic girls aged 11 to 18 in southwest London. Uh, under tr the trusteeship of the Catholic Archdiocese of Southwark, we are part of the global community of Ursuline schools inspired by our Catholic faith and by our patron, um, St. Angela Marici. As the girls will tell you, our core value is Serviam and all Ursuline students are empowered at our school to have the confidence and belief to know that as full and equal members of their society, they can and will make a positive contribution to their church and to their world. Throughout the day, students are going to read excerpts of a letter drafted last year by 10 Ursuline students aged 14 to 18. This, this letter was written as a, at a symposium at Roehampton with myself, their RE teacher, and Professor Beattie. Stu Together, students considered Amor Amoris Laetitia, thinking about the implications of phrases such as feminine genius, specifically feminine abilities, and the weakening of the maternal presence, and questions such words raise for them in their future. Having reflected on the Pope's words, students tell him their faith and hopes for the future in the church and as young Catholic women. As women who will grow both to ha have successful careers and if they choose to be mothers. They explore some of the challenges they face in today's world, specifically around equality, sexuality and gender, mental health and social media. In this letter, young, these young Catholic women demonstrate that they do indeed have the authentic faith, the deep desire for change that Pope Francis has encouraged in us all. They ask for an equal place in the full life of the church and an equal role in his enterprise of change. A chance to use their power and all their gifts and talents in the battle to end global poverty prevent the destruction of our environment and create a more equal, more kind world, pleasing to God who created us all. So girls, over to you. <coughs> Dear Pope Francis, as young women in the church, Catholicism is at the center of our lives. Our faith in Jesus Christ gives us our values. Forgiveness, compassion, wanting to change the world for the better, leadership, kindness, love, community, courage, and peace. Our school motto is Serviam, and we understand this to mean serving others and making a difference. We are so grateful that you are bringing the issues of equality and the needs of the poor to everyone's notice. Thank you for emphasizing the importance of caring for our world and the environment if we are to improve people's lives. We know that you recognize that women have ambitions outside the home, but we don't think this is properly acknowledged by the church. We all have missions in our lives. We aspire to be lawyers, nurses, teachers, musicians, athletes, engineers, doctors, and some of us feel called to have a family as well. Whilst motherhood is a really amazing aspect of being a woman, it is just one aspect, not the only one. In a changing society, it's important to change the ways that we as a church engage with young people and women. Our Catholic mothers and grandmothers are our role models. Here is how one of our group described it. I have felt more inspired by the inspirational Catholic women I know than by what I hear in church on Sunday, particularly my grandmother and mother. They showed me what it means to be a strong, faithful woman 
and have given me the ideals and values I respect. Caring, confidence, self-assurance, independence, and helping your family to flourish through hard work and guidance. We need Catholic female role models for faith and service in the church and in our wider society. And we need the church to speak out about their work, praising women of faith for their achievements. We'll help support strong Catholic women in every community. One of our groups speaks for many when she says, As our Pope, you've inspired me greatly to uphold and respect the values of Catholicism and to understand the way to be a good Catholic. At the same time, I cannot ignore the prejudice formed against women in our societies. As young women, we feel it is our duty to raise the issues that are affecting us in our lives and that we feel we are not given enough consideration by the church. As one member of our group wrote, As a young woman in the Catholic Church, I have faith. But the church does not enrich my sense of what it means to be a Catholic woman in the ways that it could. Ideally, I believe the church should be more outspoken in parishes about the roles of women beyond motherhood and about equality and women's leadership. Initially, when we looked at the words feminine genius, it sounded complimentary, but then we asked ourselves what it really means. We think of the qualities it refers to, which are supposedly inherent to womanhood, such as caring, nurturing, and receptivity. It is evident that there is a persistent reference to motherhood within church teachings on vocations. And we believe that motherhood is really important, but focusing only on this part of being a woman is dangerous and does not relate in any way to our ambitions as women or our experience of the world for a number of reasons. We believe using the phrase feminine genius puts a particular burden on women to be the caring, nurturing gender. Yet there are no reasons why husbands and fathers can't be these things also. Children need unconditional love and responsible guardians, which doesn't depend on gender. A father who is not present in his children's lives is arguably equally as much at fault or sinful as a mother would be. Parents are equally responsible. What is the church doing to tackle the problem of men leaving their families? We do not see a weakening of this maternal presence that you refer to. On the contrary, we see lots of young people like us being brought up by their mothers alone. We looked up the statistics. Around 90% of single parents in the UK are women. The proportion who are men has remained at around 10% for over a decade. In our experience, young people are often being really well brought up by just their mothers. Extremely rarely do we see mothers walking away and abandoning their children. Here is what one student wrote. At the age of 12, my father left. It has taken me through these extreme circumstances to realize that masculine genius is also required in a family as well as feminine genius. We are equals, and consequently, we should both have the whole life responsibility of parenting. Caring for young children is not a feminine genius, but a human genius. Not all women are able to have children, or are called to have children, or have the opportunity to be mothers. But what does this mean for them in the church? Don't, don't they have a mission, as they are not exp expressing their specifically feminine abilities, or carrying out their specific mission in the world? We believe women can work, be leaders, and be really good mothers. As one of our groups said, the women in my life all work outside the home as well as having a family. Another said, as a Catholic student, I want to go into science and pharmaceuticals, 
but would also like to get married and have children. I can be both. Somebody else wrote, in the future, I aspire to become an engineer within the field of science. I also want to have children. The human mind is one of the most complex machines, and it is capable of performing more than one task, more than parenting, more than one career. I have not heard of a mother who does not put her children first. Women are able to be more than just mothers because we are genius. Equality. Some see it as an opportunity. Some see it as reality. And most of us still see it as unattainable. The Catholic Church teaches us that everyone is made in God's image, yet walls are made instead of bridges. We divide ourselves within sexuality and gender. Roles are enforced on all people of the church for men and women. We believe everyone is equal, but different. And this includes gender. Within our generation, we are influenced and inspired by Catholic social teaching and our society to be open-minded to all of our peers and to be accepting of everyone. Therefore, many of us find it hard to conform to the teachings of the Catholic Church, which, although strongly preaching equality of value of all, subtly encourage a divide within those of different sexualities and genders. These are the words of one student. LGBTQI Catholic teens feel trapped within the walls set by this divide, causing us not to feel fully committed to our faith due to the teachings that go against our very existence, which makes us wonder, do we exist in the eyes of God? Will my faith accept me? Individually, some of us believe God accepts everyone, but the church says otherwise. So what am I supposed to believe? Can I still go to church? Equally, all those who are able to care for children and bring them up in a loving and enriching environment with a high quality of life for them should be encouraged, whoever or whatever their gender, culture, background, ethnicity, or sexuality. These should not matter. A member of the group expressed well why we say this. Growing up in London, we have been lucky enough to be surrounded by a lot of different cultures, faiths, backgrounds, genders and sexualities. In this environment, it has become clear to us that the subject of becoming a parent and of marriage is one that is important to all of us. Ursuline students believe mental health issues among women are an epidemic. How can the church help solve this problem? How can the church understand and address the issues of mental health and give young women a sense of belonging and being loved and respected through the teaching of the gospel? One of our group described the difficulties we face because of social media. Social media defines my worth and the worth of all young women. Our society gives such a narrow view of what a successful woman is, what we look like and how much money we make. This is not good, but my peers and I are growing up in a society where the number of likes we get on Instagram and Facebook seem to define the person that we are. We are absorbed in this alternate reality that was created for the benefit of none. It distorts our view on society and the members within it. This horrible alternative world encourages immediate self-gratification and results in self-obsessed youthful souls. Appearance is being made to be everything. Young women, uh, we need to do something about this. Young women, including myself, should be building themselves into magnificent, glorious people who can use their values to tackle the problems of the world as Pope Francis challenges us to do, protecting our environment and improving the lives of others. Social media is a one-way route to mental health problems and suicidal thoughts for young people 
as it offers a false sense of reality, completely flooded with photo editing, blemishing effects, and fake people. More and more women feel desperate because they lack a sense of belonging within society and have no way of reaching the online ideal of womanhood. How can our Catholic faith help us? God is always there for us and with us. This is true. But in church on Sunday, there is no acknowledgement of the new technology and social media itself and the problems we are facing. None of us are aware of the church raising or discussing current issues, such as girls feeling worthless and empty within. We have learned at church and in our RE lessons that Mary Magdalene and Mary Mother of James were the first witnesses to the resurrection, the first to tell the good news. Our RE teacher tells us that they were the first evangelists. It is so important for the church to offer female role models, to provide important jobs for women using all their gifts and talents to the benefit of the common good and to hear the voices of women everywhere. In our research, we have learned that globally, women perform two-thirds of the work, but only earn 10% of the world's income. And two out of three people living in poverty are women. Women must work to escape poverty for themselves and their children. To tackle poverty, women need more education and more opportunities. Only very rich women can stay at home with their children. We do not know women like this, and we are not living in poverty. The United Nations says women's political participation is fundamental to democracy and essential to the achievement of sustainable development. Plan UK says educating girls helps break the cycle of poverty and inequality. We passionately believe this. Thank you for hearing our voices. We are grateful for your leadership and example. We hope that we have shared some of the experiences of being a young Catholic woman today. We pray for you and all in the church who are working for a better world. Please include us in this work. In love, faith and hope, Students from the Ashline High School, Wimbledon.